My name is Andy Deal. I'm your host today. Um, presenting will be Mr. Jorge Fernandez. He's an application engineer based out of Northern California, and also Nathan Eliason. He's our senior technical specialist uh, based out of Southern California. Uh, over to you, Nathan. Okay, thank you, Andy. Um, so just introduce our, uh, Jorge, do you want to just introduce yourself real quick? Yeah, for those of you who don't know me, I've uh, been with Kativa a number of years and have some vast experience in uh, um, Vault uh, implementations. Uh, so some of you have, uh, on the call here, I noticed already I've, I've either helped implement with you or uh, done some training for you and so forth. So today, I look forward to you guys knowing just a little bit more about how you can uh, ex uh, include your extended team into this too. All right, thanks, Jorge. And uh, as you mentioned, my name is Nathan Eliason, and uh, I've been at Kativ now for a year. Uh, I was with Autodesk for seven years or so before that. And uh, I've been out in the field a lot, looking at a lot of different data management implementations, and uh, have worked with Vault for several years. And uh, as Jorge mentioned, we're excited to be here with all of you today and to talk about what Vault Office has to offer for you and your company. So to give a quick agenda, you know, we went through our introductions real quick. Uh, what I want to do now is give an overview of the functionality that you can find with Vault Office. After that, uh, Jorge is going to be giving a live demonstration. Uh, once his demonstration has concluded, then we're going to go ahead and do a Q&A session, and then we'll wrap up today's presentation. And just as a note, anytime you have a question during today's broadcast, uh, feel free to type that into the, uh, the chat field, uh, because we do have a couple moderators that will be looking at those questions and will be answering them as they come in. So before we started, I just wanted to give a quick high-level overview of the Vault family of products. So, you know, Vault Basic comes with all of our suites out of the box. Um, then if you need to have additional functionality than what's offered with Vault Basic, then, you know, you can purchase Vault Workgroup or Vault Professional. And when you move up to either of these two uh, different flavors of Vault, you get the additional functionality that you can see over here on the left column. Now, one key that I wanted to point out is that, you know, we are going to be discussing Vault Office today, and Vault Office only works with Vault Professional or Vault Workgroup. So if you do see any uh, functions from the webcast today that are interesting to you and you want to investigate further, and you're on Vault Basic, you will need to also look at upgrading the version of Vault that you currently use today. Now, I wanted to start out by giving an overview of the different types of access to engineering data that a lot of companies often find themselves with. So, as you know, the engineering data, Vault does a really good job of managing that, of keeping it secure, and making sure that uh, it's very clear what is the current master revision or version of any engineering document. But oftentimes there are other groups at companies that need to access that engineering information. So maybe sales needs to quickly grab a drawing so they can collaborate with a customer. Or maybe purchasing needs to grab a drawing so that they can send it off to a vendor to start getting quotes. Or maybe manufacturing needs to pull the drawing so that they can go out and start making the parts or putting assemblies together. So there are a lot of reasons why different groups outside of engineering would need to access that data. In addition, uh, for example, technical publications, maybe they're starting to create their own documents that aren't CAD documents. So for example, maybe they need to create some assembly instructions, or maybe they need to um, create some specification documents, or maybe sales has some bid documents and some quote documents that they would want to manage centrally so that everyone knows what the latest bid is and that everyone can access it from a central location. With Vault Office, it enables you to expand this type of access and this type of capability to those that are not in engineering. So it's a powerful way to involve more people in the engineering process, to give them access to this data without the need of them going to engineering and asking for all this data and without you know, keeping this data in disparate locations all throughout the company. It allows you to keep it centrally managed and easily accessible by everyone. So to access Vault Office, there are a couple different options. 
Um, first of all, there's a web browser option, and you know, based on what a user needs, you, you have these two different options you can go. Um, from the web application, they can check in and out files. Uh, they can search and look at the metadata of any of the files. Um, but if they need more advanced access, then you can also install a desktop application. And the desktop application will let them you know, assign lifecycle states. Uh, maybe you have a change order process that you want different groups to participate in. Um, you can do all of that through the desktop application. Um, in addition, you know, as I mentioned, one of the key benefits of Vault Office is it allows other groups outside of engineering to find engineering or other types of data themselves. So there's powerful search function. Uh, there's a Google-like interface where you can just type in some keywords and it will come back with some hits. And you can click on those files and get more information about them. Um, there's also some more advanced searching capabilities. So if you know a particular word is in the description, um, if you want to search on a file based on when it was created or who created it, um, there are advanced searches that allow you to define those more advanced capabilities and quickly zero in on the exact document that you're looking for. In addition to that, Vault Office also offers others outside of engineering to mark up drawings. So oftentimes, uh, for example, in manufacturing as they're making a part or putting an assembly together, they might notice that there's a mistake on the drawing. And they might want to communicate back to engineering what those issues or those mistakes are. You know, they can obviously take a red pen or something and, and do it manually on a printed sheet of paper, but it's much more efficient if they can do it electronically, then they can check that back into Vault, and inside of Vault, you now have a record of what the change request itself was, and it's just a much more streamlined way to do that. So with Vault Office, it opens up those workflows so that you can have more streamlined uh, change request and change order type processes. In addition to that, when you do have engineering change orders and you have different groups that need to review what the change is, you know, you want them to make sure, uh, for example, purchasing, maybe they have to go get new bids, uh, maybe manufacturing needs to ensure that the changes on machining processes uh, are sufficient for what machines they have. So all of that, uh, they can participate in those those uh, change order processes by reviewing what changes have been made and then giving their official approval for the change order to move to the next step. Well, Office also provides secure access to the extended team. So oftentimes you have different types of data that different groups may not need access to. So you can, at a folder level or a file level, you can determine which groups of people or which specific users have read access, you know, read-only access, have write access, or maybe there are some sets of files you don't even want certain groups of people to be able to see. All of that can be managed with Vault Office, so it really allows you to have tight control over, over uh, how the different information is viewed and accessed. And then as I mentioned, you know, one of the key benefits of Vault Office is that you can manage all of your non-CAD data. So when you install the desktop application for Vault Office, it will actually install add-ins for Excel, Word, PowerPoint, and Microsoft Outlook. And right inside of those applications, you can log in, you can check out files, you can do searches from, you know, within Word. Um, you can make changes, check in, check out. Uh, it, it makes a really nice streamlined workflow when you're working on documents that are non-CAD documents. Um, and then as I mentioned, you know, Throughout your project, if you're exchanging emails back and forth, you're collaborating, trying to make important decisions, and you want to be able to, to have a history available to people in the future that want to go back and, and follow the trail, you can actually attach emails from Outlook right into Vault. And again, it, you can do that right from within Outlook. So there are a lot of really nice workflows that are available for the non-CAD users when you use Vault Office. So with that said, I want to go ahead and turn the time over to uh, Jorge, who is going to give a demonstration. All right. Uh, so now let's take a look at the capabilities that 
uh, Nathan spoke about. So uh, we're going to take a look at a scenario where uh, Sally from Sales <laughs> has been working with uh, their customer, and the customer has reported that they are experiencing issues with one of their parts in the assembly that, that's been provided. So you know, in this scenario, Sally has received this information, and she's started to involve engin the engineering team and the project manager uh, to run a design validation study using Nash Trend in CAD, which is our um, embedded simulation solution. Uh, but before we jump into that, let's just take a moment first to think about how traditionally someone like Sally in sales would solve this or, or track this. You know, it could very likely be an Excel sheet. I'm sure some of you that are on this call are doing that already. Uh, multiple phone calls, emails, or um, or they might initiate and manage um, in, in order to initiate or manage some type of change. Or in a lot of cases, just simply walking over to somebody's cubicle kind of initiates this whole thing. You know, there's some talk back and forth, maybe some meetings go go by that no one necessarily documented per se. So we're going to look at how we can enable, uh, in this case here, sales, for example, to leverage Vault with the engineering team um, and the project manager since they are already using Vault. Again, as, as Nathan mentioned earlier, uh, this works on top of um, Vault Workgroup and Vault Professional. So we're going to look at having uh, Sally from Sales initiate an engineering change order and be able to add documentation into Vault, as well as changing lifecycle states, much like most people who uh, might be using Vault today. Uh, so that's what we'll be taking a look at here. Let me go ahead and switch over to my screen now. So what I have set up here for you today is for us to have Sally log into Vault. You'll notice at the top here it actually says Autodesk Vault Office. So uh, Vault Office and Vault Professional Client are two separate uh, installs. Um, Sally would only install Vault Office in this case. No need to take up an extra license that the engineering team might usually take. For, for some of those uh, that are on the line, I've, I've even talked to you before about, you know, if you want the, the salespeople involved in the process to approve, for example, you'd have to give them a, a vault professional license. Well, now that goes, um, now what they do instead is they do purchase a vault office license to be able to do this activity and, and be, uh, you know, uh, closer to the entire process. So I'm going to go ahead and log in as Sally from sales here uh, to be able to take a look at this and be able to control my own data. So it, it, for those of you who haven't used Vault, I just wanted to touch on a few key things that uh, people uh, in your extended team can also take advantage of. As um, Nathan was also mentioning, they can be able to use the search capability inside of here. And not just the standard search, but the, the advanced search as well, just as if you were working right inside of Vault um, as a standard user. You can come in here and you can change the different property types and, and different conditions to be able to narrow down and make sure you find the right information you need. Uh, otherwise, you can also just type it in here and, and come up with a more general search as well to be able to find the information you want. And you can still leverage this also to be able to save the search, for example, to be able to come up with this search very quickly and not have to go searching for it every single time, thus giving you this quick shortcut in the left-hand side to be able to find this data. So as Sally and Sales, uh, we've already uh, gotten this this. Um, report from engineering and checked in this file. I can now control this file. You know, someone in sales won't necessarily control the engineering files typically. So in here I can right click and I can check in and check out. I can still see its history. I can still attach it to other files like CAD files and so forth and see where it's been used, for example, any change orders that it's been in. And I can preview this. For those of you that aren't aware, Vault uh, can preview Office files, including Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, um, Excel, um, and uh, oh, and PDFs as well. Not so, not necessarily just Office files either. So what Sally wants to do is, you know, she's identified that there's an issue going on um, with it, um, working with engineering and the project manager. So, along working alongside the project manager, he said, well, let's go ahead and initiate this change order. So it's very easy to just right click in here and add the change order by just going to uh, a brand new one. So let me just go ahead and type in some quick data for us here. We want to lighten the front rocker by 20% is the what we came up with working as a team. So in order to do that, there's some information we typically fill out. For those of you who haven't seen Vault Professional ECO process yet, uh, here we can go into the records and see what's um, inside of here. We can add our own comments inside of here as well. 
um, and attach different files. Uh, for example, this is there's an actual part and everything that goes with this, so I can actually do a search through here as well, be able to find anything with Rocker again, be able to get to that information, add these files as necessary. So I can quickly pick on these different files and add them to this entire thing as well. Thus also giving us the ability to click on them and be able to preview them over here on the right hand side as well uh, so that you don't have to go and open up the files necessarily. We'll really quickly come over here to the status and you'll be able to see you know, I'm currently in a creation state of this ECO and um, we can come over here and, and change it into an open state then putting it into a works, working state where an engineer takes responsibility to work on it of course and then we're able to change it to a review state to you know go back and forth as necessary to approve these changes. I'll go ahead and save this ECO for now for example. Now someone in sales can very easily be more tightly integrated with the entire team to make sure that we're actually adding the files necessary and uh, communicate with each other uh, for this change order. I'm going to go ahead and, and submit it here. Now when we do a submittal here, in other words changing it from one status to another, at this point I can add more comments. Uh, an email will actually go out as well so that the uh, appropriate people will be notified that there has been a change in this uh, change order or a change order initiated in this case of course and get pushed through and again we'll be able to see that if we go to the change order tab this document sure enough is part of this change order that we've applied here. Again, let's take a moment here to think about how we would normally do this. Usually, again, you might go cubicle to cubicle, trying to uh, track down people, go back through your email history and search through that and make sure that you've, you know, uh, copied the right people and stuff like that. Where everything can be right here, people can just go right in here, see exactly what change orders have been applied to what files, uh, either just searching or uh, just by simply looking at the different data that's inside of here. Another great thing that we're able to add now and something I've had customers ask for is, well, you know, sales is a part of this process and we want to have them also be able to change uh, something to a work in progress or release date and so forth. So I'm here to tell you we can definitely do that now. We can come in here, we can change the state of this file, for example, be able to apply a different life cycle to it and also change its states uh, as needed and control its revisions just like you normally would in the um, uh, on the CAD side as well, or engineering and drafting side also. This person can also come through here and according to the, uh, depending on what options they have when they go into this ECO, they can also change or edit these states. So in this case, for example, what I did is if I come in here and try to edit it, since I can only initiate an ECO, not necessar necessarily work on the ECO, at, at least in this scenario that we've set up, I can't necessarily make those changes. At this point, I communicate with the engineering group or the project manager to get this through, right? But now we have a, a location here where we can easily uh, work together now to get to where we need to go. All right. With that said here, let me jump back over. And, you know, that's just a, a quick scenario of, of someone in the sales team being able to initiate a C ECO, uh, work with the uh, engineering team and project managers to be able to make sure we're all on the same page, right? But what if also we want to include, just as Nathan said, tech pubs or manufacturing the shop floor? You know, tech, tech, technical publication people will need access to the data, especially release data. Uh, as well as manufacturing. Manufacturing could be involved in many different ways, right? Uh, they might want to um, make sure they're setting up the right um, um, jigs or something like that for tooling. Uh, they might have a suggestion on making the part just a little bit less expensive. So let's take a look at different ways that they might interact with this process as well. So as Nathan started mentioning also is that you also you have two different methods to get into this using Vault Office. You can use this uh, Explorer that we've just been looking at or I can also log in through the Thin Client as well. Uh, for some of you who have already been using the Thin Client, you've probably noticed this read-only access option that you have on here. Well, with Vault Office, if you if you uncheck that, then you're going into this more Vault Office um, type of uh, feel where what that means is you have more capabilities to actually um, um, uh, check in and check out files. You won't be able to change lifecycle states through here, but you can check in and check out your own files, your own documentation that you might need to do without actually using up a Vault license. 
You can also interrogate the data. So much like you would before in Thin Client, you can come in here, you can scroll down through the, to, through the different data and be able to get to the information that you need that's been released already and be able to preview it through here. So if you haven't used it before, things that, um, uh, Thin Client that is, things you can do in here is you can download this file, you can actually go into uh, um, a design review and be able to do red line markups through here as well. Save it back into Vault if you'd like. Uh, you can get to all those capabilities right inside of the thin client. You can also, if I kind of scroll back up here to the top, I can go to the uh, bill of materials information as well and get to the release data and be able to maybe, you know, if, if I'm even if I'm in purchasing, being able to uh, purchase a long lead item, for example. Uh, again, if I'm in manufacturing, I get the true part number that I need here or other information that goes with that as well. The idea, again, being able to see that you're able to include your extended team, uh, whether it be through the thin client to get to release documentation or to go through the thick client vault office to be able to change your life cycles and um, be more involved again. So in summary, we saw how Sally and Sales can become a closer collaborator with the engineering team, giving her access to data as necessary, initiated change orders, as well as giving her the ability to also control documents as needed, something that would either, again, be much more manual or physical, uh, depending if you're walking around uh, cubicle to cubicle or desk to desk. And then we saw how manufacturing or tech pubs can access release data uh, using the thin client to still stay very involved, not have to take up a license. Uh, and be an active member in this entire process. All right, back to you, Nathan. Okay, thanks, Jorge, appreciate that. So I'm gonna, in summary, I want to go ahead and review some of the functionality that we showed today. And uh, so, so as we saw during our presentation, you know, we talked about how there are file management tools for non-CAD data. So, you know, users that are not CAD users can check in, check out files, and can apply different, different life cycle states to them as well. Um, we looked at some of the fast searching capabilities. Uh, we talked about how there are integrations built into the Microsoft Office products so that you can quickly uh, access and work with those types of documents that a lot of users outside of engineering typically deal with. Uh, we talked about revision control for non-CAD data. Um, we talked about the design review and markup of using DWF files. And uh, we also looked at managing lifecycle states for design data. Um, in addition, we, we didn't talk about utilities for batch plotting, but you know, if you do need to, for example, if you're manufacturing and you need to plot a bunch of DWG files at the same time, um, there are utilities that will allow you to do that. Uh, we also talked about file and folder security. Um, we can also add vault data standards, which, just, which is just a way to make sure that files we check into vault have the appropriate information, or else vault will come back and, and prompt the user for the information that it needs. Um, we saw the ability for the shop floor to query, view, and print using the web client. Uh, we saw how you can create, edit, and participate in change orders, even though you're not a CAD engineer. Um, we also have the ability to uh, look at bills of materials, to, do, to create change orders, participate in change orders, um, and then we also have project reporting capabilities as well. So you can see that there's a lot of functionality that users outside of engineering can participate with, and Vault Office really offers a more economical approach um, for users that need that type of access. So I want to talk about some of the next steps. You know, here at Kativ, we're here to help. Um, you can see here's my email address at the bottom there if you ever need to contact me and, and ask a question uh, about Vault Office and, and how we can help you with it. Um, but in the meantime, there are also other things that you can do as well. Uh, you know, one thing I'd encourage you guys to do is document the use cases of where you need users outside of engineering to interact with and access the engineering data itself. Um, also, you know, look at the time spent by engineering assisting those non-CAD users. So sometimes, you know, non-CAD users will say, hey, engineering, I need a drawing, I need some information, can you get it for me? And engineering will take a substantial amount of time 
gathering up and getting all that data for them. Uh, another thing you'll want to investigate is uh, oftentimes a lot of this data that we talked about today, uh, whether they're work instructions, assembly instructions, specification documents, um, they'll be kept in all these different siloed network drives, local computers. They'll be kept all over the place. And oftentimes it will be hard to find and locate those when you need them. And, and that costs time when it's hard to find that type of data. So as you start noting um, a lot of these pain points that you have at your company and finding and accessing data, um, that's very useful to help understand how Vault Office can benefit you and your organization. So, so again, we encourage you to start looking at how Vault Office can benefit your company. And, and then, you know, we're obviously here to help you understand the return on investment that can come from a program like Vault Office, and not only that, but to help you implement it as well. So with that said, I'd like to uh, go ahead and uh, turn the time back to Andy as we go through the Q&A portion of our webcast. Great. Thank you, Nathan. Uh, thanks, Jorge. Uh, so during your presentation, there were a couple of questions that came in, and uh, Mike has answered them, but I think it's fair repeating for the whole audience. Um, so one question that came in is, uh, is there support for non-CAD document beyond just Microsoft Office products? Because you guys mentioned there's Office integration. Uh, so can you clarify that? Um, yeah, so, so really inside of Vault, you can store any type of document. There's not a limit on you know, the different types of extensions. So really you can put any data. You can put image files, you know, if you have TIFF files, if you have JPEG files, um, you can obviously put PDF files. Um, so there are a lot of different file types that you can put inside of Vault. Um, what we mean by integration with Microsoft Office products is that inside of Word and Excel and those types of programs, you will actually have a Vault toolbar that lets you more efficiently and uh, interact with Vault. Great. Um, and then the other question that we had was, um, can data standard be used with Vault Office? I know you, you mentioned that a, a little bit in your overview at the end there. Can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, when data standards are set up, you know, as I mentioned earlier, to uh, enforce that, you know, certain properties are being filled out appropriately, um, that they're even being filled out in the first place, um, when you set up those data standards to enforce uh, those types of rules, any time that, you know, a Vault Office user checks in, you know, a Word document, and if you have a data standard against that, it will enable that data standard so that um, they will have to comply with all of the different rules that have been set up. Fantastic. Um, I think we're coming up to the bottom of the hour here, so uh, that's the end of our Q&A session. Um, on behalf of everyone on the call today uh, from Katib, I'd like to thank you all for attending, and obviously, as uh, Nathan mentioned, we are here to help. So if you have additional questions that were not answered on this webcast, please feel free to contact us. Uh, you can uh, contact us via the information you see on screen or email Nathan or myself or anyone on, uh, on our Katib uh, team and we'll be more than happy to help you. Um, with that, I bid everyone uh, a very good day. Thank you for joining us today.